We mastered punches like the great Bruce Lee, but before you all bend the knee, I'll also teach you how to kick. Reverse bass, you'll learn it quick. Fuck, do me for having to not end that dirty! Today we are making a modern reverse bass from scratch. This is a bit of my own recipe so I'm sure you'll learn something new today. I'm again sticking to stock plugins and free plugins so all of you broke fucks can follow along. If you want to support me you can get a copy of the project file so you can tweak it to your heart's content. You can also win a free copy of the project file used in this video. More on that later. Let's get started. For the punch we are keeping it tame. This will not only save your wrist from damage, but it will also fit nicely with the type of reverse bass we are making. I'm using bass drum more and more for stuff like this, so pick a nice preset or make your own. However, one thing to keep in mind is that we don't want the punch to last longer than we do in bed. Around 0.9 milliseconds should be fine, or about a sixteenth of a measure. Don't worry too much in the bass drum plugin with this, as you can automate the volume with a fruity balance. For now, this is our punch. For spicing it up you can layer it or replace it with last week's tutorial. Raw punch with the same free and stock plugins. The tail is what this video is actually all about. So here we go. In 3x oscillator we'll make the first oscillator a square wave. This sounds kind of shit but shut up this is just step 1. Oscillator 2 will make into a saw wave and we'll double check oscillator 3 is turned off. Only losers need more than 2 oscillators anyways. so. Now when we invert the saw we get a fun bonus crunch, which will do a lot of heavy lifting for us. You can play with the volume of oscillator 2 a bunch, this will shift the balance of the harmonics. Inverting the saw doesn't sound like much right now, but after we did all the effects, I'll show you what it sounds like if we invert it back to prove I'm not just a pretty loudmouth. Our first EQ is just gonna be a low cut. I don't care what EQ you use, but make sure to turn on linear phase, linear phase. This is mostly a religious act at this point, but it will also help us with the stability of the bass. Now it is time for distortion. I went with Mistortion 2 because it has an asymmetric function, it is free, it has great tonal function, it is free, and I think it's priced pretty reasonable. You can set the tone to the note of your choosing. You can double check with G-Tune, a free tune checking plugin. Set symmetry all the way to one side and open up the hard clip a bit. You are aiming for a crunch sound and not for total distorted mayhem. That's later. Now for the fun part, let's add another EQ, boost the mids around the crunchy area, boost the bass and if you look closely, this second overtone is the one we are gonna use to get the movement in our reverse bass. Set your EQ point thing over it, make a narrowish band just to bully this frequency and nothing else, and automate it. We are gonna drag a point down in the center of our kick and it's only gonna be down for a tiny bit. You now created movement, though it's not yet very noticeable. Let's add another distortion, same tone and symmetry setting, hard clip open a bit and same for the soft clip for getting high. End. From now on it's mostly shaping and the methods may vary, but I'll show you mine because I need an excuse to spend more time with you and your camel toe. Crusher, let's add camel crusher with the British clean preset. This does a lot, it prevents clipping, it balances, boners and everything. If videos like this help you and you'd like to support me as well as get access to great resources for your own hardstyle production journey, you should head on out to my Gumroad page where you'll find royalty free MIDI packs, a hardstyle serum bank, project files, hardstyle drum loop and more. And because I do everything myself, I can keep my prices fair. If you already drown in packs and you'd like personal coaching from me where we deep dive into your project, or if you want custom made melodies for your songs, you should head on over to my Fiverr page where the reviews kind of speak for themselves. Quick thanks to all the kind words over there, you know who you are. Back to the video. Let's add another EQ. This is also gonna add to the movement. We're gonna link a dip around the second overtone to the same automation clip as before. Just right click, link to controller, find your automation clip, make sure to never press resolve conflicts, otherwise you and me are gonna have a conflict of our own and FL Studio won't save your ass. Accept and the automation clip should be linked. I'm also gonna bounce up the mid tones in the second half of our kick with an automation clip like this. This is just gonna add to the crunch. To battle the high end, I'm automating a high shelf in both frequency and level, so bring it down and back with these two doohickeys. 
I added another mistortion to battle depression. Soft and hard clip pretty much all the way open, and I didn't really touch the tone or symmetry. I wish I could tell you why exactly, but I honestly just tried something and this felt good with these settings. And sometimes as a musician you have to judge by your own instinct. This sounds fun and all, but we need some warmth. You and me both. So for this you can add any saturation you like. I went with GSET Plus because the title said to use free plugins. Though honestly this is a very good one. The even and odd harmonics do wonders on kicks. The crunch comes out weirdly defined and clean, so I'm pleasantly surprised by this one. Another EQ because in case you didn't notice, with making kicks the name of the game is EQ Distortion EQ Distortion EQ Distortion Repeating. I'm boosting this up a bit in the second half. This is mostly to make sure the kick pitches correctly. A lot of unpitchable kicks suffer from not enough clean low end. By boosting the sub or ideally layering your kick with a version of it with a better sub, you can create a nice symmetric wave shape with curves that will bring a strain in your no nut november efforts. Now it is time for some volume control. You can do this with kickstart, LFO tool or an automation clip on a fruity balance like I did. What you are aiming for is basically the startup preset from kickstart. So open up kickstart, recreate the shape, then delete kickstart, otherwise my title doesn't make sense. I have around 8 more plugins to add, so we need to send this channel to a second one and delink it from the master. This way the sounds needs to travel through this new channel before you hear it, allowing you to add up to 9 more sound goodizers, or in our case EQ distortion EQ distortion repeating. The first step is EQ of course. Let's link that dip from earlier to our midtones with the small band. This kind of opens the muddy mid we made earlier. And to battle the annoying high end, we are gonna link our high end shelf to the same automation clips from where we did this step earlier. Right click, find the clip, don't you fucking dare resolve conflicts, and you should be good. Another light distortion or honestly saturation for filling the blanks. I went with mistortion too because of muscle spasms at this point, but it's in such light settings so honestly I don't think it matters too much what you use there. Now this is optional, but I added a fruity reverb with the weather on 20% and the decay on 0.1 seconds. What this does in theory, is add a bit more depth in stereo. Now can I tell you honestly I hear the difference? No, no I can't. But you clicked on this video, so you better sit down and do as I say, or don't, I don't hear the difference. We need to balance this as right now it looks like me on a skateboard. Dangerous and sad. A little OTT can help there. I reckon not to go over 20% as after that it tends to sound like OTT, which is something you want to avoid at all costs. Now wanna hear something crazy? If you add another camel crusher with the British clean preset, holy fuck, like night and day, or day and night, holy fuck. Another EQ with the same high end shelf automation because I said so. Some final tweaking, be it inflator package, some saturator or some religious ritual, it's final touches so do what you must. And to close it off, another fruity balance or kickstart with the same shape as the first one we used, and our tail is pretty much there. Combine it with a club kick or an actual punch and you got yourself a nice modern reverse bass kick. As I said in the last video on punches, sound design is much more art as it is science and it requires a lot of trial and error. If I would follow these instructions three different times, I would get three different kicks. A small, almost unnoticeable change early on down the line will have a big effect for the final end result. Like for example, if you don't invert the second oscillator. Yeah, fuck you, I didn't forget. Let's hear it. Small change, very different outcome. See, do as I say, or don't. I don't know. Tell us your favorite techniques on making kicks in the comments. Ask me anything about production and feel free to leave tutorial suggestions. Best suggestion gets a free copy of the project file from this video. It was a true pleasure to be your host once again, until we meet again. <laughs>